Hi, I'm Rob Newbold, CEO of ProChain Solutions. I'm going to tell you about the critical chain approach to project management and how it provides an opportunity for you to make dramatic improvements to how your company manages its projects, speeding up projects by 30% or more, while increasing predictability to over 90% and increasing productivity. All this while dramatically reducing stress, errors, and wasted time. There are two reasons this level of improvement is possible. The first is due to a common project management approach that I call deadline management. The second is multitasking. Most of us are very caught up in deadline management, whether we realize it or not. We're very conscious of dates and we schedule many things to happen at specific dates and times. Here's a typical week's calendar. Everything is scheduled in detail. We constantly think in terms of events and times. Often we don't even distinguish between real deadlines or just nice to have dates. This also carries into our project work. We communicate with dates. Consider how deadlines work in a project. Suppose your project team has a whole set of different tasks that need to be worked. Each of these boxes represents a task. Some tasks must be completed before others can be started. We represent these dependencies with lines. And the customer generally wants to know the date the project will be finished, the final deadline. In order to make sure the project finishes by that date, we add some intermediate deadlines, maybe a few, maybe a lot. When everyone hits their deadlines on time, the project is on time. Voila! Unfortunately, when we dig down to the individual task level, we find a basic problem with deadline management. We have to hold people who own the work accountable for meeting those deadlines. But since there is variation in how long things take, people have to add safety time to their commitments. A task that takes two weeks on average might take four in reality, so if you estimate two weeks, you're sometimes going to be wrong. On the other hand, while the task owner wants as much time as possible, in the project world, management usually wants an earlier commitment because they want projects to be completed as soon as possible. So there is often some negotiation around the commitment dates between those who want more time for tasks and those who want projects to complete earlier. Now suppose you have negotiated a four-week commitment for your task, but it only ends up taking two weeks. That's great, but do you feel any desire to deliver it sooner than four weeks? Not if you want that four weeks next time you negotiate. So people rarely deliver early, and it just becomes a four-week task, not a two-to-four-week task. Of course, if any individual deadline is late, there is a domino effect that can make the overall project late. You probably see it when you go to the train station or airport. Sometimes everything is on time. Sometimes the ripple effect from delays means that everything is late. All this safety and negotiation can make true transparency difficult in any schedule, because the time estimates may not relate to the amount of work to be done. But the worst part is that this leads to multitasking. If I have a two-week task and I've estimated four weeks, I'm going to take on other things. Multitasking is the second big problem and a huge opportunity for improvement. This may be a good time to pause and think about how much multitasking you and your colleagues do. How much work do you have on your desk? How many partially read books on your nightstand? How many unfinished improvement projects in your home? Here's a picture of my simple to-do list at the start of the week. Of course, I have more than four things on my list, but I'm going to spend my time on the things that I think I'm most likely to be late on, or things that management wants me to spend time on. Right now, that's the top four tasks. I'll switch between them if I have to. Now suppose each of these tasks should take a day. How will I work them? One after the other is the logical approach, but that's probably not how it will happen, even though it seems logical. Chances are I'll switch between the tasks, trying to show progress everywhere, trying to hit all my dates. In this simple case, each one-day task will take over three days from start to finish. The problem is even worse than that, because I'll probably lose some time whenever I switch. You can see that in the gaps between the tasks. The switching may cause quality problems as well. Task switching in a car, between driving and talking on the phone, makes accidents four times as likely. Texting while driving makes accidents 20 times as likely, and quality problems, at best, cost more time. So how does all this affect projects? Take our earlier project, and now pretend that, improbably, every deadline was hit and the project came in on time. Sounds like a great success story, but how did the work really happen? Let's zero in on an individual task. Think of a block representing the time you've budgeted for a task, with time going horizontally. Work is shown as green blocks, with the height indicating the percentage of time you're spending on the task. When the task is assigned to you, it looks like you have plenty of time, so maybe you delay for a little while. Then you put in a spurt of work to make sure you're still okay. Then you ease up, doing some other things that seem more urgent. Finally, realizing the schedule is tight, 
you start working full time, maybe also putting in some evening or weekend time. Of course, this is happening with every task in the project, as shown in this picture. That means there's a lot of dead time where the purple shows through. Things wait around. Uncertainty is accounted for by putting safety time in the tasks, and we don't try very hard to deliver them early. We can't tell what the real priorities are, because the critical path is almost meaningless. It depends on how we multitask and how work is assigned. And the multitasking guarantees a significant amount of lost productivity. Altogether, this is really bad news for your projects. If we can compress this picture, reducing or removing the time things sit around, we can gain phenomenal improvements in speed and productivity. But in order to get there, we have to change two things. No surprise, the deadline management and the multitasking. But starting with deadline management and multitasking, how do we make things better? To understand that, let's summarize how deadline management can help or hurt us when we try to excel. First, what do I mean by excelling? Meeting commitments very quickly and reliably, without burning people out. Deadlines can help. For example, they create urgency. There's nothing like an immediate deadline to get people focused. They do also create priorities through dates. And the management rule is simple if brutal. We can pack in as many things as we like, as long as everyone hits their deadlines. You might also claim it's a good thing that the system already exists, because you don't have to risk making things worse by changing how people work. But there are also a few big negatives. First of all, the urgency is only at the deadline level, and relative urgency tends to be based on deadline dates. If we compare the full project picture with the timeline we're managing to, all we see in the deadline world is a lot of individual deadlines. Second, people put in safety time, which leads them to multitask. And third, the multitasking and deadlines add to the uncertainty. We don't know when people are going to be doing what. This leads us to the three basic elements of our critical chain management system. First, it has to show us the relative urgency of tasks and projects in a way that's globally focused. We want to consider the entire portfolio, but also take into account what we know about the projects and the individual tasks. Second, it has to create clear, stable priorities that allow us to focus, especially on those few things that are globally important. Some projects are most important, and in each project it must be crystal clear which tasks are critical. If your priorities are clear and stable, it's much harder to multitask. Third and finally, the system has to embody a change in culture from thinking in terms of dates and deadlines to thinking in terms of a relay race where the people with the batons are running as fast as possible. We'll talk about each of these three elements in the next sections. Going back to the first element, let's build a system that gives a global picture of urgency. To start, we'll need to get rid of the deadlines. We'll also need to take the safety time out of individual task estimates. This is the picture we want to end up with. But the problem here is the customer is not protected from the very real uncertainty that we have to deal with. Things do go wrong. So we'll give some of the protection back to protect the overall project in the form of a project buffer, represented here by a box at the end. By removing safety time from the tasks, we're saying it's OK for people to be late on their tasks. The tasks do not have safety to protect a date. The safety is owned by the project. It's also OK for tasks to be early. We want as soon as possible, whether that's earlier or later than we predicted. This project buffer becomes a kind of shock absorber that protects the customer from disruptions. Of course, when we give a commitment date to the customer, it will be the end of the buffer. Let's see how the buffer works with a simple example. Suppose we have just created a very simple project plan. The three tasks must be worked in sequence, and we have a buffer at the end to protect our customer commitment. Over the first couple of weeks, time goes by, but less than one week of work is accomplished, as shown by the horizontal black line. What happens? The work is pushed out, which then overlaps the buffer. That overlap represents the buffer consumption. We've used up some of our project's safety time. Now, suppose some more time passes and work goes faster than expected. Now what happens? This time, when we adjust the schedule, we recover some buffer time. Here's a chart we use to track buffer consumption. The vertical dimension is percentage of the buffer consumed. The horizontal dimension is percent of the project completed. So vertically, we can see how much safety we have left horizontally how much of the project has been done. All projects should start with a data point in the lower left. Nothing completed, no buffer consumed. Once again, we do some work and consume some buffer. Now we get a new data point on the fever chart, showing some buffer consumption along with some progress on the project. 
When we recover buffer, as before, the next data point will go down. The fever chart gives a graphical view of progress on the project. Project level urgency can be seen in the regions of the fever chart. The red zone indicates that there isn't much buffer left. When the project gets into the red, senior management may start asking questions about the buffer recovery plans and looking for ways to help. The buffer also gives an idea of what's important. A small change in buffer consumption, say a task being a couple of days late, may not make much difference and shouldn't provoke a big reaction. A big change could indicate real problems. Here's another kind of fever chart that allows you to look at all the projects in your portfolio at once. The dimensions are the same as for the individual project fever chart. You can zoom into the status of individual projects and look at the most important tasks for that project. Notice that globally, management attention should only be focused in a few places, the red projects. Just as important, management attention is not needed in the other areas. This picture ties together the global situation, from the portfolio to the individual tasks and resources. So far, we've talked about the first part of the solution, global urgency. The second part of the solution is to use these same project schedules to set clear priorities for all workers, both within and across projects. We can start with another simple example that's just a little more complicated than the previous one. Task A has to be completed before task B can be started. Tasks B, C, and D must join together before work begins on the end task. We've also modeled a key resource, Joe, because that creates a more credible schedule and allows us to set better priorities. Joe has been assigned to tasks A and C. In the real world, if we attached deadlines to A and C, Joe might work first on C because it's more urgent, or he might multitask between A and C. What we'd prefer is that he do A first, then C, because that creates a shorter schedule. That sequence gives us this picture. If we look at what determines the end date for the project, it's probably tasks A, C, and end. These are called the critical chain, the longest chain of tasks, taking into account resource limitations. Of course, to complete our critical chain schedule, we must also add a project buffer to the end. By understanding which tasks and which buffers are critical, and by how much, we can create task lists that show the relative priorities for all the tasks of a given resource, credible priorities that allow us to dramatically reduce the multitasking. If we want to manage our pipeline of projects so that priorities are even clearer, we can use software to push out or pace projects when there are insufficient resources to work on them all without multitasking. For example, consider the previous project. Joe, our key resource, is busy for some time. Scheduling another similar project at the same time could overload him. Instead, we should start that second project later so that Joe is not tempted to multitask. Paradoxically, by pushing out the second project, we actually help things to go more quickly. The third piece of the solution is to change the organization's culture from the deadline approach, in which everything is expected to be on time, to a relay race in which we want to move things along as quickly as possible. That's a whole different mindset for people. Tasks are allowed to be later early because we know that we can't predict everything. People are expected to work one task at a time as quickly as possible. The relay race really changes how people work together. There are a number of drivers of success. We'll talk about just a few here. First is to create a senior leadership team that oversees the change effort. They don't have to spend a lot of time managing the implementation, but they do have to learn about the changes and support them. Another driver is to establish work rules, norms for how people will work together to run the relay races. For example, maybe if you're working on a high priority task, you're allowed to say no or not now to others, maybe even to your boss. A third driver is lots of communication. What's happening? What's not happening? What should be happening? These three major pieces of the solution, global urgency, setting clear priorities, and the relay race, are at the heart of the critical chain approach. These concepts are also not at the heart of most other improvement methodologies. We have seen organizations spend tens of millions of dollars on multi-year initiatives that do not address deadline management and multitasking, and that therefore fail to capitalize on the huge potential for improvement. The results from the critical chain approach are truly remarkable and have been repeated by many companies, large and small, in many different industries. If you want to find out more, you can look for my book, The Billion Dollar Solution. You can also read Be Fast or Be Gone by Andreas Shearer. Visit our website at www.prochain.com or contact us at info at prochain.com. Thank you.